بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Last week we explained that the sunnah and following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one way by which we can make our entire lives valuable. So one aspect of the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is related to our sleeping. From the time a person enters his home after the Isha salah, right till the time of Fajr, this is generally considered the time of sleeping. What was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's noble and blessed practice? How would he pass the night? What did he teach us? By and large, a person spends at least one quarter of his life sleeping. But if we sleep in accordance to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then that one quarter of our life, which is outwardly a time wasted, becomes one quarter of a life of ibadah. We are sleeping and resting, but everything is ibadah. So what were the sunnahs of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Even before going to bed, what did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teach us to do? So we will just mention a few important aspects. The first thing is that the teaching of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, point number one, is to always sleep early. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam greatly disliked. Actually he detested discussions after the Isha Salah. Sleeping before Isha was prohibited by him. He disliked this. And speaking after Isha was, was disliked by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha said, he would never sleep before Isha. And he would never engage in idle discussions after Isha. After Isha, he would either engage in the remembrance of Allah, and thereby he would gain the rewards of Akhirah. Or he would go to sleep and save himself from things of no benefit. This was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's blessed practice. After this Aisha radiallahu anha said that there are three types of talking after Isha which is allowed. One is for a married couple. Just to have some discussion, the day was a busy day and a husband needs to speak to his wife. That kind of discussion, this is allowed. A traveler, he is traveling, he's on his road, now he wants to stay awake. If everyone around him is sleeping, then it becomes quite difficult for him to stay awake. And the third is, for a person who wants to perform salah through the night. So he speaks for a while, just to keep himself awake, because he wants to spend the entire night in salah. These three categories of people are such that talking for them is allowed. If however there is a talk of deen, or some kind of worry for the sake of deen, some fikr for the sake of deen, some discussions on the upliftment of the ummah, then all of this is allowed. Sayyidina Umar anhu himself says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after the Isha Salah, would sometimes hold lengthy discussions with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu regarding the matters of the Muslims. And Umar radiallahu anhu said, I would also be with them. So if there is a dini program or some important mashwara, <coughs> for these kind of discussions there is no problem. But just like this to while away our time after Isha. And worse still in the month of Ramadan. So much time is wasted. This was something which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam detested. The sad reality is that what Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam didn't want for the ummah, that has become the special sign of our ummah. A person goes to many countries of the world and you'll see that this, the nightlife is the main life. To this extent, even Haramain Sharifin, Makkah, Mukarrama, Madina, Munawara, and everyone's concept and their thinking is this. We go Haramain, it means stay awake the entire night. Stay awake in what? So if somebody is staying awake in the masjid, Understandable. Somebody is staying awake in Tilawat, in Tahajjud. Understandable. Somebody is staying awake prowling through the marketplaces, the shop, shopping malls. That is not understandable. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam didn't like wasting of time after Isha. If you're not going to make ibadah, go and sleep. The sleep is better for you than staying awake and engaging in idle discussions. Marana Ashraf Ali Thani rahmatullahi said, he said, my nature has become such. When I see somebody talking after Isha, 
He said, I just feel like slapping him on his face. How can you be speaking after the Isha Salah? One wali of Allah, it is mentioned about him in Fadali Amal, his incident is mentioned. I'm not sure if it was Mansur ibn al-Mu'tamir. Forty years he was never seen speaking after the Isha Salah. This is, a, this is something of perfection. It is something that we should strive for. Idle discussions, whether it is physical or whether it is on social media. All of this, after Isha is the time, no, no, not for this. If we have to have any discussion at home, make ta'aleem at home. Go and speak to our wives at home or our children at home regarding some matter of deen. Go and sleep early. We'll be easily able to wake up for Fajr Salah, no difficulty. Many people complain it's difficult to wake up for Fajr. Then we ask them that, but do you sleep early or are you spending time on the cell phone? Say, no, I sleep very late because of my cell phone. Then obviously it's going to be difficult to wake up for Fajr. Fajr will be easy when you sleep early. So this is the first sunnah. Sunnah number one, sleep early at night. Sunnah number two, when a person returns home, they ask sun, sunan for entering the home, we're not going to discuss that. But there is one very important sunnah which is very practical. And that is when we enter the home to say Bismillah. Generally when we we'll go home, or the woman folk of our houses, what they will do is somebody has taken the responsibility of locking up. When we lock our home, say Bismillah and lock the home. Lock our doors, close the windows, but say Bismillah. Then Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam also taught us, cover your containers and say Bismillah. And tighten your water skins. And in all of this year, the idea of the hadith was on all of this, a person should be saying Bismillah. If a person will do so, and he will take Allah's name while putting off the lights, while closing the door, while closing his containers, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the great benefits he will get is that Allah will grant him a special kind of protection. Some narrations explain that when Bismillah is recited like this, when locking the door, shayateen cannot enter the home. Mufti Ahmad Khan Puri is a very senior alim, a very senior mufti of India. He mentioned in his lessons on Riyadh al-Saliheen, he said, that one friend of mine came to me and he narrated this incident to me. He said that we were having a lot of problems at home. There was fighting and there was a lot of tension and misunderstandings. And because of this year, there was no peace in our house. He said, I heard from somebody, we should recite Bismillah when we lock our, our home. So I started reciting Bismillah, locking the home, closing the containers, putting things away. And reciting Bismillah, I practiced on this for a while and Alhamdulillah, not realizing, but the problems also which we were having in our home went away. Sometime after this year, we met an Amil, people who generally deal with Jinnat and they, uh, they try to help people to take out Jinnat. It's an entire subject on its own, we don't want to discuss that now. So he said, I met an Amil, and that Amil, when he checked me, he said to me that you at some time, in your house, there were certain shayateen who were making trouble. Then he summoned one of those shayateen. When that shaitan was brought, that shaitan said, we were causing trouble. But then this man started reciting Bismillah when he was locking his home. Because of that, from that time onwards, we were barred from entering the house. We couldn't get in. Mufti Ahmad Khan Puri said, I, he himself heard this man came and narrated this incident to him. He said, we couldn't get in because everything was blocked. The blockage of our home and the protection of our home is Bismillah. Such a simple sunnah. Close your gate, Bismillah. Put off the lights, Bismillah. Close the containers. So included in this sunnah, one day every year, waba, but we would say sickness comes down from the heavens. It descends. And it enters into any container of food which is open. Now anybody who eats from that container, drinks from that water which was left open, that waba, that sickness, that epidemic or whatever sickness is going around, that will enter into his body, he will be afflicted. The cure and solution for this was what? Close everything and recite Bismillah. One friend of ours, very close friend, mashallah, he was kidnapped. One, one or two years back. Everyone would have heard his incident. After being kidnapped, people were looking for him, searching for him. The police had a lead. He was in his room. And the kidnappers or the people who were taking care of him, they came and they pushed him. If I remember correctly, 
in between two mattresses. And they closed the mattresses over him. There was a small kind of hole there and they said to him, keep quiet. He doesn't know what's happening. So he is quiet, silent. He heard doors opening, doors closing. Another door, he heard his door opening, closing. And the sounds went away. Who it was? It was actually the police with some of his family members who had come to find him. They had some lead that he was in that house. But he doesn't know anything further, so he's very frightened. He's not making a sound. They had finished the house. They were about to go out. One person said, I just want to go back to that one room. And I want to make sure again. He went to that room. He opened the door. He said, Assalamu alaikum. My friend heard, Assalamu alaikum. He said, Wa alaikum salam. I'm here. He started moving. That person came. He opened. They found him there. So that person said, he said, the only reason I came back to this room was because I saw there was a glass of water. But the glass of water had a small little tissue paper or something covering it on top. And nobody besides a Muslim covers his glass at night to make sure that nothing must penetrate into it. That sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saved this, this, this alim in when he was kidnapped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a realization these sunnats are only for our benefit. It could happen some harmful creature gets inside and we are aff affected as a result. And it could happen sickness comes inside and we are affected. Simple, all that we need to do, recite Bismillah and close. Our lights, recite Bismillah and put them off. Close all of our containers. Make sure all food is covered. One alim came to South Africa. He was in a masjid. A glass of water was next to him. It was night time after Isha, his bayan was. He looked at the glass. He took something from his pocket, a tissue, and he put it over the glass. He said, it's after Isha. We were taught in the sunnah, we should not leave utensils open after Isha. He was going to drink from it. But the istihdar of sunnah, it was in his mind. Allah bless me, all of us with tawfiq. These are very simple sunnahs. We only mentioned two. Actually, my intention was to mention many more. But these two sunnahs, if we can all implement, go home, tell our family members. We're going to sleep early at night. And the second thing is, we're going to make sure we close our house and our home with Bismillah. We're going to close everything in our house with Bismillah. And we will see the great benefits of this. May Allah bless me and all of us with tawfiq.